You're listening to Catalyst for Change, and my name is Jessica Huckabee, your host. I started this podcast to learn what makes people resilient after challenging events and how they've used those series of events as a catalyst for change in their life. You'll hear stories of resiliency and strength, so get ready, sit back, and be prepared to be inspired. Today, my guest is Courtney Rivard. Courtney is an amazing woman with a great story. She's raising two wonderful children. One has just turned 18, and she was married for 17 years and found out that her husband was having an affair with another man. So she was the straight spouse in the relationship, and we talk about her journey of getting through that. Thank you so much, Courtney, for coming on my show, Catalyst for Change Stories. I was really curious to hear more about what has been a catalyst for change in your life. Yeah, well, thanks so much for having me on the show. Um, The biggest catalyst for change, I think I've had many instances of that, but the biggest one is um, my uh, divorce from my husband who about six years ago, I found out that he was having an affair with another man. And as you can imagine, that's pretty upsetting. So, (laughs) you know, we've been married for 17 years and I kind of thought that even though our marriage was, it wasn't bad, it was kind of a little stagnant, kind of like, you know, we kind of felt a little like roommates, but we were still for the most part, I felt like happy and like we weren't like in trouble. So I kind of thought, okay, 17 years, we're safe. Like, let's just roll into old age, right? (laughs) So it was kind of a shock when I found this out. And um, it was, I I honestly, like I was kind of, was blindsided. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I didn't know how I was going to move forward. I, I was, I had severe depression, um, anxiety. I was actually hospitalized a couple of times. Um, for, for depression. And so that was definitely the catalyst that really, it, it was like, you know, when people talk about hitting a rock bottom, like I was in a place where I didn't know how I was going to get out of it. It seemed very hopeless and like no light at the end of the tunnel. And so I kind of was forced with, I can either sit here stuck in this place of not knowing how I'm going to get out of this, this hole, or I can just start to take steps forward. Um, And so I chose the taking little steps forward. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That must have been a big change. And it sounds like a big catalyst in your life that you had to grow from and, you know, change the person, your life, your whole life had to change because of that. You were hospitalized for depression. Were there and during this time that you're going through those big, th- big changes, what are some things that really helped get you through those times when you were really sad? Yeah, during, during those times, um, oh, it was so hard, like just linking back, but like I could have never done it without um, the support of my family. Um, and I had a couple of good friends who were, who were there for me. It felt like a really long time where I felt like things were never going to get better. And so I think, you know, honestly, when I think about it, when my sister, my sister had been through a hard time, like a year or two before this happened. And she told me that, you know, when she was going through her hard time, that someone told her to just take it like plank by plank. She said, like, you're laying down planks to get across, you know? And so she's like, just, you know, lay down the one plank, get to the other side of it, lay down another one. Or the other thing she said to me was, take things a day at a time or an hour at a time or five minutes at a time if you need to. So I think like some of those things were really what got me through. Um, And then also just reading, reading good, reading books that were like, like personal development, self-help, or um, I really got a lot out of Pema Chodron's writing back then, or um, like before we got on the show, I mentioned um, The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. That's a good one. Um, Yeah, those were some things that kind of those um, words kind of gave me some hope. Yeah. Yeah. So reading books that were more inspirational, making you feel less alone, and then just taking it one step at a time, one day at a time, one minute at a time, however you could to get through that day. And you mentioned you have children. So how would when you were going through all this, how did you manage? How did you manage to keep your family together and kind of move forward? Well, I can't say that I, looking back, I, I mean, I, 
I don't want to say that I did a terrible job at it because I don't, that's not very nice to myself, but I, I made a lot of mistakes. I, I didn't really know how I didn't know. I didn't really know how to make it through my days. I was really, really, really struggling. And so like, you know, there were days where I had a really hard time getting out of bed and my son was 12 at the time. And, you know, he knew what was going on. He, um, as much as I tried to say, I'm not feeling well today, like, you know, he's, he knew what was going on. Um, so that's something I've had to work on a lot is, is sort of forgiving myself for that time of not really being my best. And I think I always say to, I I really believe that like people are doing the best that they can with what they have at the time. Like, I really do believe that it's just that sometimes like our best is not what other people need. And so that's just, that's like work I've had to do. Yeah. It sounds like he may have been more resilient because of the experience. So you taught him how to be resilient and how to watch how someone else does it. And so when he goes through difficult times in the future, he'll know that no matter how sad you get and, you know, how much you don't feel good that you can get through it, it sounds like. So you're teaching him resilience by what you went through. I hope so. I think, (laughs) yeah, I I think that it's, it's definitely to like a lesson that like we all break at some, you know, we all go through hard times and it doesn't mean when we're going through a hard time, it doesn't mean that we have to be stuck in that hard time. Like there is an other side to it. And, you know, life is full of those ups and downs and the downs are, they're, they're necessary to know what the good time to feel the good times too. So I hope that he's learned something from all of that. Yeah. And you mentioned you had a younger child as well. And so so what was it like explaining that to a younger child? Cause you, I guess you have to take into account like the, the, their age and stage of development, but how was it for that child? So she was, um, so my daughter was four when this all happened, going on five. And so she was so young that she didn't really, you know, she didn't really know what was going on. So it was easier to sort of like, it was easier to, I don't want to say disguise it, but you know, it was easier to kind of get through with, with her and, you know, so, um, and to be honest, my son, you know, probably helped me a lot with her too. And like, that's another thing that like I've had to kind of get my head around and like forgive myself for is maybe putting too much responsibility on him at that time too. But with her, it wasn't as hard just because she was so much younger. Yeah. Yeah. And now how is your relationship with your children and your, your ex now Mm ex-husband? How is that going? Um, so with my kids, uh, the relationship is good. I, they're, they're, they're doing really well. My relationship with both of them is my son's 18 now. Uh, my daughter's 11. So, you know, things seem really good. I'm sure that, you know, my son's been through a hard time too. So, you know, there's that, but he seems to also be doing really well. Um, my relationship with my ex-husband is, it's pretty good. Like we're not, we're not like good friends. We don't hang out and I yeah. probably wouldn't choose to like hang out with him. He's married now to not the same person he was having an affair with. He has, you know, a different partner, but they got married in the summer and, you know, they seem very happy and I'm happy for him and his partner. I, I like his partner and he's good to my kids. So it's all, you know, it seems, it seems fine. It seems like everything kind of worked out. Yeah. And <laughs> That's how a little strange, but. do you have any advice for people that may be going through something similar as what you went through? Yeah. Um, it's funny, like this happens when this happened to me, I had never heard of it happening to anyone else before, but, um, once I started kind of, you know, getting online and researching, like, what do I do about this? Um, it happens to actually a lot of people, a lot more than you'd ever think so much. So that there's even a, like a national support group called the straight spouse network. So, um, you know, if you're listening and you're going through this or, you know, someone um, that is, that's a really great resource. But I think like the number one thing I would say to people is that you are not alone. And, you know, sometimes there's a little bit of shame associated with like this, this whole thing, like in the sense that, oh my gosh, my spouse, like, what did I do wrong? Like, he's not, it, you know, and, and it's kind of you like, feel oh, rejected. It's, yeah, yeah. And it's almost this embarrassing embarrassment. Like, why did this happen to me? Like, what's wrong with me that this would happen to me? Yeah. Kind of sometimes that. And so I think that sometimes people are afraid to share that story. Like this happened to me, but what I would encourage people to do is like, just when you 
when you allow yourself to get vulnerable enough to share that, like you will find that everybody has something that they really want to share because they want to feel connected and like they're not alone. And so when you kind of, when you do that, you kind of open up, give that person, you give people permission to feel comfortable, you know, they feel comfortable sharing their story too. And it's just the way you make meaningful connection. So if you're, if you can, if you can share your story and, you know, get vulnerable, be authentic, it's just, know you're not alone. You'll find those people that are in your corner. Yeah, no, that's really good to to hear that there's a support group like that out there for the straight spouse, spouse, the one that maybe it sounds like not everybody knows, is very clear about their sexuality when they get married. Oftentimes people get married young or, you know, something changes in their life and I'm sure it's no fault of their own. I mean, I'm not saying that any, any party's at fault, but yeah, everybody's, everybody's entitled to be who they are. So, and so how did, how did the children feel about all of this? They now seem to be fine. I mean, they, um, you know, with kids, it's hard to like get their actual feelings about it. But I think that when my ex and I got divorced, my son was so uh, worried because he didn't, he said he didn't have any friends that were had divorced parents, which I don't think was true, but, but he was very concerned about being abnormal. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, these days I think they've, they've just both really accepted that this is what it is. And I think like, you know, kudos to my ex-husband too, like through, like both of us have been after we got through that initial, like hard mess of the divorce, like we both were able to just kind of set aside our differences and be like, okay, we're now co-parenting and this is our, our, we have the same job. We're just doing it differently. So I think that through that, we're able to make things easier for our kids. Yeah. And now what are you doing now? It sounds like you switched careers in the midst of all of this through this transition process with your ex. And can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah. So I actually got into coaching. So I'm a life coach now. I got certified a couple years ago and I've been just working on building my business. And I, my specialty is I help women, Gen X women primarily who feel stuck and want more like joy, meaning and freedom in their lives. I help them build lives. They're excited about a lot of times, you know, we tend to get where we feel like we're going through the motions and we feel like something's missing, but we feel guilty that we want more because we have a lot to be thankful for. So I help women get over that, just lose that and really start to think about what's possible for them instead of what's limiting them. Yeah. Okay. So getting rid of those limits and knowing that you can, anything is possible, whatever you, whatever you wish to achieve, basically. Different for everyone. Some people have really big dreams and some people have just ones that are really small and, and it's like, what's important to you and, you know, what are those dreams that you have? Yeah, that's good. So what got you onto this uh, career path? Well, um, I was a photographer for many years and I was really, I photograph children and families. And when I got divorced, I had a hard time doing that initially just photographing these like joyous moments of families was really Mm -hmm. difficult for me so I kind of took a break from that I when I started to think about picking it up again I was really passionate about helping women feel better about themselves or helping women see themselves how other people see them like I think because we you know we tend to get into this mode where we feel like we're not enough we're not good enough we're not smart enough we're not thin enough we're not pretty enough or whatever it is for you and yet other people don't see that other people see an amazing woman in front of them that can do like you know whatever and we we kind of forget how to see that and so i i was trying to figure out a way that i could use my photography to really um, impact you know, impact this. And I hired a coach to kind of help me with that, to try to get my head around it and figure it out. And as we were working together, I started to think, you know, coaching seems like something I would really be good at and I would really enjoy. And I, I said that to her and she's like, well, you should, you should look into it and you should, you should do that. You know? And, and I, I remember saying, well, I don't know, I can't do that. Like I'd have to go through you know, certification, I don't really have the money for blah, 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 you know, all these excuses. And she goes, yeah, but what if you can do it? And it was like, those words like changed my life. I, like somebody asked me what my, 
life motto is the other day. And I was like, I think it's, what if you can, what if I can, because it just, it, it's just this whole shift in how to think about things. It's not like, what, what can't I do? It's like, well, what if you can do it? So why not try? So I went for it and here I am. <laughs> oh, nice. So mindset was a big factor in yeah. changing your career path and changing yeah. who you are as a person. So are there any tools that you can, you can tell us about that you use in your practice? Yeah. A big one is just, um, is, is just how thoughts and emotions and actions are connected, which that whole thing is rooted in cognitive behavioral therapy. It's really teaching people that they have thoughts and they have beliefs that aren't necessarily true. Even just because they believe them does not mean that they're actually facts and true. Um, and that's one of the biggest tools I use is just to get people to start being aware of what they're thinking and to challenge those belief systems that are holding them back. Um, so I do a lot of work on that with my clients. Oh, nice. And you, you recommended um, the untethered soul, which is actually by someone who started a tech company, who's a multi-million dollar person, you know, in his own right before he started the book. Yeah. So that's really interesting. I've, I've listened to that book on audio. It's just a wonderful book. Are there any other books that you, you recommend that were really impactful to you on your journey? Yeah, so there's, I, I'm an avid reader, so I have so many, but I will say <laughs> a couple of my favorite. Um, anything by Pema Chodron is, I love, I, I just love the, the concept of, um, you know, not being a non-attachment and impermanence is that, you know, everything comes and goes and um, to not get attached to things that are bad, happening that are bad or good because they don't last forever. So to just, yeah. to really practice staying in the moment and enjoying what's here and now. Eckhart Tolle's um, A New Earth or The Power of Now, really like those. I have like, I have so many books. <laughs> I can <laughs> list off probably 20 of them. That are oh, like, nice. <laughs> but those are some good ones that you mentioned. Those I've, yeah, 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 Eckhart Tolle, I've, I've read as well. It's very good, very good um, book. And it's that same message where non-attachment, being in the now, things will change. This isn't forever, this moment in time that you're in right now. Even this yeah. stage, like if you have you know, teenagers that you're having a rough time with or toddlers that you're <laughs> dealing with, you know, this will all change and then you'll miss these times. Yeah, very good. And is there anything that you do as a daily ritual to make sure that you're in the right mindset and you're not attaching to those, those negative thoughts that may, may pass through your mind? Yeah, um, I, I do. It's, and it's not perfect because none of us are, but um, I aim to every morning when I wake up, I you know, get my coffee, but I sit down and I, I don't always meditate, but I do try to do that often. It's a practice though, and I um, have work to do there, but I also journal like almost every morning, just kind of about what thoughts are in my head. And um, especially as an entrepreneur, like the mindset or, or thoughts, limiting beliefs can really, really, really derail you really quick. Cause there's a lot of things you have to do in your in business that are not comfortable. And so yeah. if your mindset is not right, it, it's just, it's a recipe for not succeeding. So I really do a lot of work on, on my thoughts. Like I said before, like just really looking at them and seeing like, which, which ones might be holding me back and how can I shift yeah. my thoughts to something that are a little more helpful. Yeah, no, that's really powerful is changing those thought patterns and um, in the outlook on, on life. You think there's anything we may not have touched upon during our call? There was something I was going to say about, I think I didn't really talk about this during the episode, but um, I struggled with an eating disorder for a lot of my adult life. And there was something I was going to say about, like, if there are any listeners that struggle with that or know somebody who does to really practice like no the thoughts like are you know you are enough you are um i think it was really what i was going to say are like we like to beat up our bodies when we don't know how to control other things our that was feelings was and our emotions yeah we it's like something control. that we yeah it's like for women especially like, like that's something that we tend to um to go to like if i can control my body i can tr control these other things and if I can make my body pretty and, you know, thin and worthy of attention, then I'm okay. 
so that was the, I think that was the other thing I was going to say. It was just um, that, that that's something that has also inspired me to take the career path that so an eating disorder is just trying to have it's for some people, it's just trying to have control over their life by having control over their body and what they intake into their mouth and uh, how they feed themselves and nourish themselves. It sounds like is what you're saying. And yeah, a little bit. It's, it's sort of like, um, it's also a way of coping with, uh, with emotions and stuff that are yeah. like just a little bit too difficult to, to handle. Um, I think one of the reasons why, when I went through my divorce, I had such a hard time was I had been in recovery for my eating disorder for quite a while, but I hadn't really had a chance or hadn't really had an, an instance to have to practice the things that I learned and how yeah. to cope with. And so like when you're hit so hard with something that is so emotionally challenging to have to put those things into practice all at once, it's like, it's like, well, no, you don't have any practice. There's no dress rehearsal. Here you go. You're on stage. Like it doesn't really work out well that way. So I think that's one of the reasons I struggled so hard was I didn't really, I had some tools, but I didn't really know how to use them yet. Yeah. Cause you had practiced and you were doing well, but this, this divorce and this um, affair that your ex-husband had was just, it blew you out of the water. It sounded like, and you had some tools to get through it, but yeah, you were just in the, in the beginning phases of using them. It sounds, it sounds like is what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Oh I just, goodness. I had, I did not have great coping skills. And then I don't, I think um, we talked about this before we got on the recording, but um, I went through a dialectical behavior therapy program um, yeah. while I was going through all of this with my divorce and that program, if, people listening aren't familiar. It's just, it's a program that helps you um, learn. It gives you skills to deal with um, really difficult emotions, regulating the emotions, tolerating distress. Um, Mindfulness is a big part of it. Um, That helped me so much too, to really like learn. It helped me kind of consolidate the the tools I had learned before, like into something that was a little easier to put into practice and then also help me practice them. I I have a friend that went through that um, with Stanford and it was a really expensive program, but she had me do the workbook with her. Uh, And so every Friday we'd get together and we do the workbook together. And one of the tools was, okay, when your kids are like yelling in the backseat, you're upset with your husband, you're in an argument, like think of like, you use your hearing to hear the birds chirping outside or the, you know, the rain falling, use your eyes to see something beautiful that is in your eyesight. So use your senses to ground you back into who you are and yeah. knowing that you'll get through that moment. So where the kids are screaming, you're in an argument. <laughs> is yeah. that kind of one of the tools? Yeah, there's, there's so the great thing about dialogue DBT is that um, there's so many different options to draw from. So like it, yeah. it works in four modules, there's a mindfulness module, um, an interpersonal like relations or how to communicate module, um, distress tolerance, and then just emotional regulation. And so each module gives you a lot of different ways to approach. Like, so, so it, it's nice because some, you know, obviously some things don't, not everything works for every person. So you can kind of play around with what works. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of one of the, the things that, um, I learned in there too. And another one that I really love that if you're listening, try this, <laughs> it's great, is like when you have, when your brain is really chaotic and you have a lot of thoughts going on, if you can just take a minute and picture all your thoughts as like leaves on a stream and you yeah. just like observe them floating away. And so when they float away, or it works like if you picture clouds too, it's a really great exercise to practice, like not attaching to your thoughts to just watch them. Watch yeah. Them. Oh, that's a, that's a good one. I think I heard something similar in the um, untethered soul book. When I was listening to that book, something about, you know, watching them as clouds pass your thoughts as clouds pass. Yeah, Yeah. no, that was a really good tool. Um, Wonderful. Well, you gave us some really good tips and you have an amazing story. And I really hope the listeners who may be going through something similar, because you're right, you're not the only one that went through this. There's many other people that may just not talk about it, like you're open to talking about it. So um, I encourage them to either, you know, contact you for coaching to get through this difficult time, realizing that they're not alone. There's support groups 
like you mentioned, the straight spouse is a support support network group. Um, yeah, so there's many dis- different tools and people yeah. that will help them. So. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, if you're listeners, if you even just you know want to reach out and say hi, I'm going through this too, or I know somebody who is, like, feel free to reach out and just just for some support too. That's you know, I'm 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 here for that too. <laughs> yeah, very good. Well, thank you so much, Courtney. I really enjoyed speaking with you. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was great chatting with you too. You've been listening to Catalyst for Change, and my name is Jessica Huckabay, your host. Join us next week for another story of resiliency. And please subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. And feel free to leave me a comment or email me at catalystforchange20 at gmail.com. Or on Facebook, we have a page at Catalyst for Change Resiliency.